Hi, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. I'm reading Morning Prayer, All Saints to Advent, Church of England, Common Worship. You'll find it at the church's website, the Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable apps for Apple Android devices. If you're following in the book, good morning, David. Morning, Dominic. If you're following in the book, you'll find it towards the beginning after prayer during the day. There's a section called Morning and Evening Prayer during the seasons. Morning Prayer, All Saints is towards the end of that segment. And we're going out on Zoom as David's just joined us. The codes are on the Blythe Valley Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook. You can watch it there now or at your leisure. And you're welcome to join me in the building or uh, look up my YouTube channel, Dominic Doble, and uh, you'll find the audio uploaded there in due course. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They They make make known the glory glory of your kingdom. (coughs) A song of trust in God, as the deer longs for the water brooks, so longs my soul for you, O God. My soul is thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now, when I think on these things, I pour out my soul, how I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God with the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, he is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the, Son, and and to the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was at the beginning, beginning is now, now, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on a fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. (coughs) The bells obviously found it difficult getting up this morning. Um, It was, um, I got a loaf of bread to get out of the bread makers. Um, Psalm 48 and 52 are the psalms appointed this morning. If you are following in the book, you'll find them at the back. And we'll read by alternate verses, opening and closing with the refrain, Glory be after the last verse, pausing to make use of the prayer that follows, if we will. Psalms 48 and 52. We have waited on your your loving kindness, O O God. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. This holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great King. In her palaces, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw but dumbfounded, dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we had heard, so we have seen in the holy city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God. 
God has established her forever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches the ends of the earth. Your, night ha your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice and the daughters of Judah be glad because of your judgments, O Lord. Walk about Zion and go around about her. Count all her towers. <coughs> Consider well her bulwarks. Pass through her citadels. <coughs> that he may tell those who come after that such is our God for ever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide for evermore. Glory to the Father, to the Father and to the Son, and to, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now and shall, shall be, be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We have waited in your loving, loving kindness, O oh God. I trust Your in the goodness of God, of God forever, forever and ever. ever. Why do you glory in evil, you tyrant, while the goodness of God endures continually? You plot destruction, you deceiver. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor. You love evil rather than good, falsehood rather than the word of truth. You love all the words that hate. O you deceitful tongue. Therefore, O God, therefore God shall utterly bring you down. He shall take you and pluck you out of your tent and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see this and tremble. They shall laugh you to scorn say, This is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great riches and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a spreading olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the goodness of God for ever and ever. I will always give thanks to you for what you have done. I will hope in your name for your faithful one's delight in it. Glory to the Father, to the Father and to the Son, and to, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and shall, shall be forever. forever. Amen. I trust, I trust in the goodness, goodness of God, God forever and ever. ever. Scrolling past our first reading to the canticle, a song of the new creation, turning back in the book to the same in morning prayer, all saints to Advent. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father, the Father and, and to the Son and to, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the, the beginning, beginning is now, now and shall, shall be forever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So we turn to Daniel, which is, I think, five or six books into the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures. So if you open your Bible, if you've got both covenants there, about two-thirds of the way through, and move back towards the beginning. Once you've got through the minor prophets like Micah and Habakkuk and those unlikely names, you should find Daniel. If you get as far as Isaiah, you've gone too far. We're looking for chapter 8, large number 8 at the head of the paragraph. That's the chapter number, chapter 8, and verses 15 to the end. And there are the small numbers in the text, verse 15. Daniel 8, 15. 
onwards is also available online just before the canticle we read a moment ago. Just have to find the canticle and scroll back a little to find Daniel 8 from 15. Thank you, David. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I tried to understand it. Then someone appeared standing before me, having the appearance of a man, and I heard a human voice, and it would I, calling, Gabriel, help this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I became frightened and fell prostrate. But he said to me, Understand, O mortal, the vision is for the time of the end. As he was speaking to me, I fell into a trance, face to the ground. Then he touched me and set me on my feet. He said, Listen and I will tell you what will take place later in the period of wrath, for it refers to the appointed time of the end. As for the ram that you saw with the two horns, these are the kings of Media, Omidia, and Persia. The male goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn between its eyes is the first king. As for the horn that was broken, the place of which four others arose, four kingdoms shall rise from this nation, but not with his, with his power. The end of their rule, when the transgressions reach their full measure, a king of bold countenance shall arise, skilled in intrigue. He shall grow strong in power, shall cause fearful destruction, and shall succeed in what he does. He shall destroy the powerful and the people of the holy ones. By his coming, he shall make deceit prosper under his hand, and in his own mind he shall be great. Without warning, he shall destroy many, and shall even rise up against the Prince of Peace, so the, the Prince of Princes. But he shall be broken, not by human hands. The vision of the evenings and the mornings that have been told is true. As for you, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days from now. So I, Daniel, overcome and lay sick for some days. Then I arose and went about the king's business. I was dismayed by the vision and did not understand it. Thank you. So Daniel has revelation written during a period of persecution. Daniel written um, arguably um, during if not after the event but uh, Couched in terms of being a prophecy before, to encourage God's people that all the empires and dynasties that are coming and going and persecuting will in the end be overthrown by uh, the final great power of the sovereign of sovereigns. <coughs> but uh, we haven't got quite got to that point yet. And so he starts out by describing fantastical beasts in a sort of a heavenly throne room <clears throat> and uh, activities that are the sort of stuff of nightmares of monsters and uh, then they sort of um, cautiously urge uh, edge towards um, giving the game away and explain these animals are in fact kingdoms and empires and this is an explanation not quite enough um, perhaps I mean there's Media and Persia and Greece written there um, I don't know whether they actually were or whether these are sort of leading people on um, but any actual mention of God, for example, so that the language here talks about uh, somebody having the appearance of a man, so they, they don't talk about God, otherwise I guess the censors would have got hold of it and removed it from them. Prince of Princes, I don't know whether that's supposed to be um, the accuser, whether it's uh, God, who knows. Rising up against the Prince of Princes, it could be either way. But... Uh, it's explained to us that effectively kingdoms, dynasties, thrones 
will come and go. <clears throat> and we haven't quite got that yet, got there yet. But uh, elsewhere in Daniel and elsewhere in the scriptures, we read and understand that, uh, and certainly in Revelation, there's the great uh, sort of victori victorious, triumphant throne room of God, to which we may, we may be turning in our next reading. But to uh, be encouraged that of all the comings and goings and machinations of the nations of the world, as uh, David was reading, he shall destroy the powerful, he shall succeed in what he does, he shall cause fearful destruction. I was thinking of Putin and one of the um, ways in which we can, it seems to me, use these prophecies is uh, work, as we work out to whom they were applying, we can look back and uh, contemporaneously and forwards because I think they are as relevant in their moral judgment, if you like, whether we're referring to the ancients or people yet to come or indeed people of our own day. But be encouraged, God knows and God will vindicate and... Uh, <laughs> It was written to encourage those who are undergoing persecution that uh, God is aware. And so whatever our persecution, whether it's in war, whether it's at home or work, or as we're trying to challenge the authorities to give us money so we can exist, medication or health care that we can exist, there will be an end. It is in sight. So to Revelation 11, 1 to 14, our next reading, similar, sort of, similar lines, um, apocalyptic, coded message of hope for the persecuted Right at the end of the second covenant this time, the Gentile scriptures. So if you've got a Bible in front of you, turn to the end and uh, you'll find Revelation. We're looking for the large number 11, chapter 11, small numbers in the text 1 to 14. Online, just scroll on past the canticle we read earlier in Remus Daily Prayer, Church of England's website or downloadable apps for Apple or Android devices. Revelation 11, 1 to 14. Thank you, David. And I was given a measuring rod like a staff <clears throat> and I was told... Come and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and those who worship there. But do not measure the court outside the temple, leave that out, for it is given over to the nations, and they will trample over the holy city for forty-two months. And I will grant my two witnesses authority to prophesy for one thousand two hundred and sixty years, wearing sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord on the earth, of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. Anyone who wants to harm them must be killed in this, in this manner. They have authority to shut the sky so that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have authority over the waters to turn the blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that is prophetically called Sodom and Egypt. Then also their Lord was crucified. There where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, members of the people and tribes and languages and nations will gaze at their dead bodies and refuse to let them be placed in a tomb. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and celebrate and exchange presents because these two prophets had been a torment to the inhabitants of the earth. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and those who saw them were terrified. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies were watched them. At that moment there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming very soon. Thank you. 
what I think this may be referring to, and um, one can look up and uh, read various different accounts of different people's views and opinions. One thing I think is reasonably com we can be confident about is that the people who wrote it and the people whom, for whom it was written would have understood who these two olive trees, what these olive trees were. As I explained with Daniel, it's code, because if they actually said what they were talking about plainly, then the censors would have got hold of it, and this is written by and for persecuted people to encourage them. Basically, God's overall control, whatever the persecution, whatever the difficulties they're going through at the moment. And uh, we haven't had it today, but uh, in recent reading from Revelation, we've had destruction of civilization, partial, partial destruction of the environment, partial destruction um, of... Uh, business norms and um, so throughout the ages but even more um, pertinent for today we can think well the end is nigh therefore not that we can rest and relax and uh, put our feet up <clears throat> but that we need to act all the more vigorously as God's people <clears throat> to uh, prophesy to speak about justice truth and light to stand against destruction to stand for those who are broken and hurting but to understand the seasons and the signs of the times and the challenges that the persecuted church around the world, because we're in a minority in the Church of England, in having honour being an established church. Most churches and most Christians are, as they always have been, alongside the Jews, their cousins, persecuted. But these two olive trees, an answer is that they are Peter and Paul, the two leading um, apostles, Olive trees bring forth um, olives, olive oil. Oil is a sign of the Holy Spirit, brings healing. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's used for cleansing <coughs> prior to um, baptism, christening. And so they could be signs of, sources of the, the blessing of God in their day and in our day. They are the two lampstands, two olive trees, uh, two lampstands, so they are lights, where well, they are one and the same. <coughs> Who knows? But it could make sense if we consider them to be apostles, killed, mocked, restored to life, called up to heaven. <clears throat> and uh, so it may seem that church life is dead. It may seem that our faith is gone. But uh, be hopeful, whether you're on a congregation, whether you're contemplating coming back like the prodigal son to faith. There is always an open door. There is always hope because uh, the writers here needed to know that under their persecution, that God was in charge. And in the end, that great victorious triumphant throne room of God will be the final chapter. So to the responsory back in morning prayer, all saints to Advent. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips shall proclaim, lips shall proclaim your, your faithfulness. faithfulness. The heavens bear witness to your wonders. I, I will sing forever of your, of your love, love, O Lord. Lord. The assembly of your saints proclaims your truth. My lips, My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. faithfulness. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. I will sing, sing forever of your love, O Lord. My lips, My lips shall proclaim your faithfulness. The song of Zechariah. You will guide will us guide with your, your counsel, O God, God, and afterwards receive us with glory. glory. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, Lord the God of Israel, Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has, he has raised up for us a mighty Savior, Savior born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set, to set us free, free from the hands of our enemies, enemies. free to, to worship him without fear, fear holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall, shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You will guide us with your counsel, O God, and afterwards receive us with glory. Father, Son, Spirit, one in three, three in one, at the beginning of this day we commend and commit ourselves to your safekeeping <coughs> and to your great commission that we as the broken and hurting standing amongst the broken and hurting from a denomination from a faith stream that is persecuted we cling to you as our staff and our uh, rod stick that we may be defended against our own thoughts and the accusations of others as we stumble along and may that wood of those tools, the word of the cross, be a sure defence for ourselves and for those amongst whom we live as they gather around us, as they respond to your light and to the blessing of your provision of that olive oil for healing, for anointing, for calling, for commissioning, for freeing, and indeed I guess also for preparing food and sustenance. We thank you for that great rich luxuriant provision, even in persecution. And we pray that even as we and those amongst us may lose their faith lives and actual lives, that there is in the end that great resurrection as we believe in this season of all saints to Advent. Amen. We pray for Aotearoa, New Zealand and Australia with World Council of Churches. We are thankful for the beauty of the land and the waters of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Can't pronounce that correctly. I guess that's the uh, correct Maori name for the country and Australia and the special relationship that people enjoy with the natural environment. We pray for the churches to have the imagination, skills and energy to build bridges of understanding in increasingly multi-religious and multicultural contexts. Amen. Christian Action Church and Education. Gentle Shepherd, we lift to you everyone who is suffering the distress and disorientation that comes with memory loss brought about by injury, traumatic event, illness. Please grant them rest, peace, and to help those who uh, care for them, particularly spouses, family, friends, to help them move on from the concern and bother of that immediate moment where they can't remember what they're wanting to say or do. We pray for their carers that uh, they will be able themselves to cope with that grief and the hurt and the pain that the person they knew and loved is there and yet not. Amen. From Green Christian. The next two themes in COP27 for today are ACE and civil society and energy. I don't know what ACE is. Oh, action for climate empowerment. Uh, it refers to work in the sphere of education, training and public awareness. The role of civil society is today's focal point. Energy Day, nearly every thematic day has an African focus element and Energy Day is no exception. The session will include the launch of an initiative to just an affordable energy transition in the continent. Green hydrogen will be highlighted as a key enabler in transition or to transition from fossil to clean energy. I pray God for that technology to become uh, increasingly widely available and used in an affordable manner uh, at a local, locally accountable uh, and affordable way that doesn't require um, the great shareholding capitalist empires and uh, the other nations of the world to get unduly involved. Our Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our care and stewardship of creation. Pope Francis writes, All-powerful God, you are present in the whole universe and in the smallest creatures you embrace with your tenderness all that exists. Pour out on us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live harming no one. In our benefit cycle of prayer, we're invited to pray for local businesses, people in utilities, and uh, local authority employees on roads and the like and our armed services military and healthcare uh, uniformed military uh, healthcare um, police 
fire service, coast guard and others. We thank you for them, for the structures that support them. We pray that we're prepared to pay, whether we're praying privately um, for good jobs and services or through our taxation and rates, that uh, we can have decent, adequate um, offering and that all people throughout that uh, web of employ will enjoy decent terms and conditions and be able to live well. Amen. <clears throat> we thank you for our people today, praying for Jason, church warden here at St Mary's Halesworth, for the treasurer's secretary, others on the PCC, an extra royal congregation and con uh, community. We thank you for the uh, excellent remembrance service that we had, even if I did forget a hymn. And uh, we thank you for the great turnout of uh, young people, people from across the different services for whom we've prayed, the town council and other councillors, even um, the King's representative, the Deputy High Sheriff. We thank you for that great support for this place, your work here, and the healing and uh, reconciliation that uh, such services can and will bring as this pl place becomes once again the, that beating heart of connectivity amongst all the division dissension and uh, silo working of all that is so good in this place but just needs a little bit more um, awareness and promotion and uh, interaction amen lord in your mercy hear our prayer, prayer. Tahan <laughs> Jen <laughs> The Collect for All Saints from the book Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son Christ, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those inexpressible joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, your will be done on, earth on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today yeah. our daily bread. Yeah. Forgive, forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but to deliver us from evil. evil. For the kingdom, for the, kingdom the, power, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has entered the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.